Hi, I'm Brittany from Equipping Godly Women, and I have been hurt in the past. And chances are you probably have been too. Whether somebody made you angry or disappointed you, chances are somebody hurt you in some way sometime in your life. Now, thankfully for most of us, we are able to kind of forgive and forget and move on with our lives. But what happens when the hurt is so bad that we can't just move on and it continues to affect us even after the issue has passed? If you are somebody who is currently dealing with issues like trust issues, anxiety, depression, um, just general sadness or tension in your life, and you feel like it could be because of something that happened in the past that you haven't really been able to work through all the way yet, then today's podcast is one that I absolutely want you to check out. In it, we're talking with Jill Monaco, author of the book, Freedom Coach Model, Encounter the Presence of God, and Find Freedom in Christ Through Powerful Questions and Listening Prayers. As somebody who has had to go through this process in my life before, where I've had to sit down and say, okay, what happened in my past and how is it affecting me today? I can tell you having these conversations and asking these questions is truly powerful and life-changing for those who need it. So if that's you, absolutely stay tuned because this is one podcast episode you are not going to want to miss. All right, today we are here talking with Jill Monaco, author of the book, Freedom Coach Model, Encounter the Presence of God and Find Freedom in Christ Through Powerful Questions and Listening Prayers. Thank you so much, Jill, for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. First thing, I wanna dive right into this book because this is actually a book that I own um, and I just love it and want you to share more about it with our readers because I think that they're gonna find it really helpful. So can you just start by telling us a little bit about a basic overview of the Freedom Coach Model? What is it? Who is it for? Um, how does it work? I always tell people that the Freedom Coach Model isn't a book that you will actually read. It's not like chapter, I'm gonna sit down and read a good book. It's, it's 20 different chapters that have different, what I call activations. So I'll describe a, a, maybe a, a thing that you wanna work through through and the chapters are things like forgiveness or overcoming fear or rejection or even encountering God and hearing him. Um, and so I would describe a little bit of what the purpose is. And then it has a list of questions that I suggest that you ask God and you have a place to journal and just write your prayer time out with him. That sounds really interesting. Let me ask you, what inspired you to create this model? Like, did you see a need for it or how did this come about? Wow, yeah, it's such a good question. It it wasn't like a, a something happened and that's why I created it. It started slowly. I started just, you know, doing ministry and inner healing in my church and and helping people encounter the presence and goodness of God and in some of the things they were struggling with. And then I learned about coaching and as I got trained as a coach, I realized that, you know, model of helping people was also excellent. You would ask powerful questions and help them discover things within themselves. And I found that I really liked both. I liked helping ask people questions that they could find the answer to what they're really searching for, but with God's help and in incorporating prayer. And so just naturally, I started blending the two together. And then I had clients who said, wow, that prayer, that thing you led me through was so powerful. Can you send that to me in an email? And so I started emailing my clients the work we had done, which included new things that God had taught me with individual clients. And so I compiled all that into a, what I thought was just going to be like an ebook for my clients, just so they'd have a resource. And then I had other people saying, you know, you should really publish that because I think that would help more people. So that's really how the book came about and the process of developing this Freedom Coach model. All right, so you mentioned forgiveness as one of the topics that this book covers. Can you go over with us just a little bit more about what all topics that this book covers? I just want Christian women who are listening to this to right now to say, you know, is this something that could help me? Like, what are the issues that this will help them with? Oh, for sure. I have like a section that I call the basics and then advanced. And the basics are because everybody needs this. Everyone I work with has to walk through forgiveness at some point in their lives. Um, and even if you think you've forgiven someone, but if you think about them, you just have that uh, feeling in your stomach, then that may, this prayer sometimes helps and these coaching tools help. 
Um, also in that section are overcoming everything that it has to do with anger kind of falls under the hatred chapter. Um, we don't think we hate, but it's, you know, again, going on forgiveness, it's a little bit deeper if you have deeper um, wounds or, you know, uh, strongholds. And then there's rejection, overcoming rejection, um, overcoming lies. That's a huge one. That one I use all the time because it, you encounter God and ask him in a certain situation, what lie am I believing? Am I believing a lie about you? Am I believing a lie about myself or about others? And so I help people learn how to identify lies and then how to ask God, what is the truth here? And so when you get God's truth, you are choosing to agree with the kingdom of heaven instead of the kingdom of darkness. And so that's a huge tool that we can use over and over again in our lives. So like I said, there's 20 different topics. On the more lighthearted side, there's um, what I call the friendship questions, where I have 60 questions where you just you know, you want to enjoy God's presence and ask him questions like, what do you like about me? And um, things that don't, they're not life or death. They don't matter. They're just doing relationship with him. Um, fruit of the spirit. So there's lot. those are, does that give you a good idea of some of the examples in the book? Yeah. Um, I love how you talked, especially about just identifying those lies and picking them out and replacing them with truth. I have an article on my website that is also all about, um, how to take those thoughts captive and replace them with God's truth. And I know so many ha women have read this and found it really helpful and emailed to me and said, hey, this is really helpful. That's why I just thought this book would be something that would help them dive in a little bit more. Um, whereas my book is going to be like, here's your general, like generic framework for what you do, but then your book is going to get in and say, okay, if you have anger, if you have forgiveness issues, if you have, you know, what do you have? I don't know, but bring it to this book and see, you know, what resonates with you. And then here are prayers to help you um, walk through it and conquer it. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you about on the back of your book, you mentioned that you had gone through quite a bit of things in your past. Are you willing to share with us some of the things that you have walked through um, that you've had to find healing from? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, there's actually something I'm going through right now that I can't say, but it was some childhood abuse and I am in process with the authorities right now. So there's some things that I can't get details about, but so many women have had sexual abuse. Um, and then there's also spiritual abuse that has happened. Um, I didn't know that that's what I was going through. I was a new believer when I was on staff at a church and um, the senior pastor who was married made a pass at me. And so I I have on my blog as well, my Me Too Church 2 story. But sadly, that wasn't the only time that happened to me. Um, and it wasn't even, um, I mean, there was another incident where it was in that sort of physical nature where I was, my boundaries were violated. But what I found even deeper than that was spiritual abuse. Um, and unfortunately in the church um, and church leaders and ministries, you know, because you're working hard for Jesus. And so that can just very easily become what was meant for righteousness sake, become manipulation and control. And so some of those kinds of things happened in my past. And what I didn't know was happening was because I loved God and I just, I wanted to, you know, keep pursuing him and, um, and, and not let those things hold me back from loving other people. But what I found was it was hurting my soul and I was getting injuries in, in my soul, my mind, will, and emotions that were very quickly turning into strongholds and keeping me from believing in myself. So I think a lot of women, when we go through these hard things, I ended up struggling with insecurity, fears. If, if someone um, was angry, I would just do whatever it took to be a peacemaker and, and work it out because my past had told me information that made me feel like, oh, this is what's going to happen. And there's a part of our brain, the amygdala, that does this. We have a traumatic event, and if it happens long enough or if we don't pursue our healing, our brain remembers that and tries to warn us when something similar happens. And so that's what happened to me. I got into these cycles of not having confidence, not believing in myself, um, not trusting God, and not believing the best about others. So as a coach, it's not... Um, it's not my job as a coach or even in this book to help you get counseling and healing from your past, 
but your past can tell you some information about how you're thinking presently and how the present will show you how you're being restricted for your future. So that's where this coaching comes in. A lot of um, things in the book, I give you questions to ask. So you're not just spending time with God. You're actually saying, okay, what do I need to do now that will help me um, get free of this? So how can I set new goals? And with this new thinking, how is that going to change my future? So that's what my past did and, and how it played out in my life. And I think that's such an important distinction to make, though. I really appreciate you being willing to share your story because I feel like so many women are dealing with things and struggling with them and they don't realize, you know, the extent to which it affects their lives on a daily basis and the extent to which they're still struggling with things um, because they just kind of like lock it up. But it's so um, what I was saying a minute ago, like that's such an important distinction to make between, okay, this book isn't going to give you healing. You know, there's only so much a book can do, but first you have to be able to identify and know like what are these things that are creating strongholds in my life? What are these things that are holding me back? Um, and just to recognize those, I know I have gone through in my own life where I had things, um, lies that I believed that were totally like, I don't want to be dramatic and say ruining my life, but pretty much like I had these lies that, you know, were affecting everything. And it was only once I could understand them and like pinpoint what they were that I could figure that out. Um, so Another thing I wanted to ask you, um, I think a lot of times that's a big reason why women don't get the help that they need to overcome these issues because they don't realize that that is what they're dealing with. Um, what are some other reasons that you think that women don't get the help that they need to overcome these hurts and strongholds and things that they're dealing with? Oh, wow. Everybody's reason is different. Um, but some of the common ones I hear, to be honest, is financial and you know with that one i think we've been sometimes trained to put ourselves last as women we're nurturers we take care of everyone else first we take care of the kids or the husband or the home and we just keep putting ourselves on the back burner and so i think self-care for women is um just something they tend to put last and i think that's changing though i'm really noticing a lot of women are are making that shift to take care of themselves in the area of rest and trying to find some more balance and having fun in their life as well as all the responsibilities um but i think financial is one i think another reason women like really hesitate to get help or get coaching or um, even go through certain chapters of this book is because they get triggered and they don't even know what that is. But again, going back to something happened and they get this resistance. And um, I'm working with a group of women right now in a co group coaching program. And a few of them mentioned, I'm feeling just resistance. I don't know why. So it's not financial. It's not even um, at the front of their brain. It's not in the understanding part. It's deep in their subconscious. And so I always say that if you're feeling resistance to something, you must do it. You must push through. And, you know, sometimes the enemy is coming against the very thing that God is trying to use to set you free. So you don't know if you need more work in that area until you're faced with something that shows you, wow, I'm not doing great in that. I thought I was, but you don't know until you're hit with it again. So for women, I think it's being really self-aware, taking the time to really love yourself and realize that we all have stuff. Yeah, that's something that I've been doing lately too, just kind of like trying to pay attention um, because usually most of the day, like we're fine, but every once in a while, like things will bubble up or I'll know that I should do something, but I feel that resistance. Like I don't want to do that. I don't want to think about that. You know, I don't want to have that conversation. So just paying attention to kind of those things that we try to dismiss. Um, but let me ask you, when women kind of notice these things going on, whether they have resistance in an area, whether they feel stuck in an area, whether they have hurts in an area, um, how do they know what their next step should be? That's something that I have questioned myself. Like, is this something that I should just read a book? Is this something that I just need to talk to a friend? Is this something where I actually need to go see a professional counselor to deal with things? How can we make that distinction? Do you have any guidelines on a question like that? Yeah, that's such a great question because if you get the wrong treatment, then it can mess you up even more. 
And so like, for instance, if you, when you need a counselor, you shouldn't see a coach. You shouldn't talk to a friend um, because coaches are going to help identify where you're at and where you're going. And friends are going to be super empathetic and maybe that'll be great. But counselors are the ones that help you overcome the past. They help you process your pain, validate it, and give you really good tools for getting through things in the past. So if it's something you're struggling with and a past issue keeps coming up, you're seeing a repeated behavior or way of thinking, um, an addiction um, or tears and emotion over something that has because of what happened in your past, I would say go to a counselor. Um, if you like, I think friends are great, but I don't, we also don't want to burn out our friends. And so if you find you're constantly going to everyone else, sometimes that you need to check and say, am I going to the Lord? Am I going to him first? Am I, am I letting him speak into me? Um, and, but I still, I love friends. They're great, but we have to remember they're co-laborers. They carry our burdens. They, you know, we're supposed to comfort those who mourn. And, and so that is good and it has a place, but they can't be the answer for us because they're not the professional. Um, and then coaches, um, the great time to see that you need a coach is maybe you know you're stuck from some of your things in your past, um, but you're not having to process the past. You just, you know that that, you know, say spiritual abuse or physical abuse gave you a mindset and a way of thinking and a way of doing things that you're like, I know this isn't right. I think it's probably because of that. But I have a lot of people come to me after they've had counseling because they need steps to change their mindset and how to move forward. And so that's where coaching is so fun for me um, because I think if you're, uh, for instance, let me just give you a little example. Oftentimes where we're stuck has to do with the meaning that we've put to an event. So you have this terrible thing happen, but out of that, you put a meaning to it. And you've told your story over and over what that means about God, your life, yourself, about others. And that meaning often will fuel your emotions. And so emotions and meaning together create your destiny. But if you can change the meaning to the thing that happened to you, often your emotions will follow. And then you'll set new goals and you'll have new energy to pursue things. So coaches can come in at that point and help you rewire and rethink the way you see the world. Um, I always say this, God, yourself, others, but it can help you rethink things and set you on a new course and a new path. I think that's an important difference to make too between if you need to see a counselor or a coach or just a friend. I know that I get a lot of people who email me, which I love people to email me, so I'm not discouraging that at all. But I will get people who email me with really huge questions like, should I divorce my husband? Or, you know, my husband cheated on me. And, you know, how can I build trust with him? We need to have people in our lives who are the right people for these positions in our life. As somebody who is online, like I can't tell somebody if they should divorce their husband or not. I am not the person. If they want um, some tips for how to read their Bible more, absolutely. Or like, you know, does the Catholic Church say this or whatever, you know, questions about things, absolutely all day. But just making sure you're going to the right people for the right things. If you just need to vent, see a friend. If you actually have something that you're really struggling with, you can't overcome, see a counselor. Um, or absolutely, I love this idea of coaching as well. Can you tell me some more, just a little bit more in depth? Um, you mentioned that you have coaching groups. What actually happens in your groups? How does that work? Yeah, I have two different programs and coaching groups that I have right now. Um, one is for singles, and I usually do it once a year, so it just finished. And in that coaching group, and I'll probably do this model in, in a different way over different subjects, but in that model, I talk about four different things that singles struggle with. And to be honest, we all struggle with it. So that's why I said I'm probably going to release this for women later this year, which is the first topic I'll teach on um, how to encounter God and how to discover your defense mechanisms. So I offer them examples and questions they can ask and some self-reflective things to see. Most of the time people say, I didn't even know I was being defensive. And that was keeping me from having intimacy with the Lord. And then I talk about forgiveness, rejection, and fear. So those are the four main things. I feel like even if you think you don't struggle with that, everyone's experienced it and God wants to reveal more about that. 
So I'll teach and then um, I'll do some an activation like out of my book where I help them hear God, um, whether they see visually or they're you know sensing something in their spirit. And then after that, we all people talk and I'll do some one on one coaching while everyone is watching and listening and continuing to learn. So that's one group. The other group that I have is a mentorship group. It's six months with women and I keep it small to 10 women. Um, we're in the middle of it right now. It opens again in uh, June. It's called Authentically You. And in that, I do teaching and video ahead of time. We have a group that's not a Facebook group. It's a different platform um, where they can all interact and they have assignments every week. And then they have a partner they can talk through things with. And then again, we discuss and, um, and I coach them one-on-one -on -one in a group atmosphere. So they're so fun. I love group coaching because we all learn from each other. It's really great. That does sound like so much fun just to get in there in a safe space and be able to talk through real issues with people who could help you process and work through them and not have to deal with them anymore would be amazing. So let me ask you another question. Um, if you, as we are about to wrap up our time here soon, if you could only share one main thought with anybody who's watching this right now and they're saying, I have some things that I'm kind of struggling with. I don't know if they're big enough to go see a counselor, but I know that I'm stuck. I know that this is affecting my life. What would you share with them? It's funny because everyone has something that they're going through. And so I find one thing is truly the answer to all of our problems. <laughs> so, and it's kind of on my, on my wall behind me, which is a phrase that says love is the key. And so I always encourage people, whether you need counseling or you want coaching or you're talking to a friend, to remember that God loves you and his love for you is bigger than your problem. I, I see all problems as opportunities to encounter God's love. If we can reframe whatever we're going through and say, instead of what is life doing to me, what is God doing for me? and receive his love in that area, it will start to soften all of our defense mechanisms, all of our fears and anxieties and worst case scenarios we're playing out in our brains. Because in that state, when we're thinking fearfully and we're having all the you know stuff, the stress that comes with it, we're not gonna receive or think well and clearly. And so if we can get to that place of peace with God and everyone's lives are different. So I understand sometimes it's not easy. You've got chillins running all over the house, um, but get to your car, go on a walk, get to a peaceful place and receive God's love. And you'll be able to make a better decision from there. That's great. So let me ask you one last question. And that is for anybody who is following along, who wants to learn more about your coaching and everything that you do and connect with you further to kind of dive into these messy issues and get them taken care of once and for all, where can they find you online? Oh, that's great. Yeah, they can go to jillmonaco.com. Uh, so at jillmonaco.com, you find, you know, all the social media things that I'm putting out there and encouragement and you know, lives and all that. You can also, there's a couple other free things on my website. I have something called the freedom assessment. So you can take an assessment to see where are you at in your freedom journey. You can also take the freedom challenge if you sign up for my newsletter and every week for six weeks, I give you a new coaching tip to encounter God and, and set some goals or simplify your life. And there's a Facebook group um, that I interact and do videos in there too. So you can also find my coaching or some workshops. So I'm starting to do more of those with the freedom coach model. And as people are calling me in to do it in their Bible study or their community or church and walk people through a, a, you know, a day session live. So you can reach me there. And I just want to encourage people again, if this is something that you are struggling with to go check out her book. I am flipping through it literally right now as we speak. And um, there's just so much goodness in here, just talking about all kinds of different issues you might not realize are having such a negative impact on your life. But just flipping through the chapters, um, reading through the questions, is this something that is going on in my life? What kind of effect is this having on me? And then having the prayers already written out for you. Okay, here's what you can pray. Here's how you can talk to God to kind of get some freedom from all these things that are holding you back without you even realizing it. So thank you so much, Jill, for agreeing to talk with us today. This has been great. 
Oh, thanks for having me. You're just a gem. I just love what you're doing and encouraging women. So you keep going, girl. <laughs> All right. So that just about does it for today's podcast episode. Now let's talk next steps. So if this is something that really resonates with you, I don't want you to just listen to this podcast and then go on your merry way and not make any changes because of it. It's great to listen to these. It's entertaining. It gives you something to do. But the real purpose is for you to actually take what you learned and then go do something with it. So let me ask you. You. How much did today's talk resonate with you? If this is something where you are saying, yes, I really can tell that I have issues in my life. I know exactly what they are. This thing happened to me. I know what it is. I know how it's affected me. I've tried to overcome it and I have not been able to. Then the first thing I want you to do is to start by trying to find a really good counselor in your area. Now, I know it can be kind of scary to go to a counselor, um, but if these are issues that are really holding you back, then I don't want you to keep just dealing with them because you feel like you have to. It is time to really get them out and deal with them so you don't have to deal with them anymore. So I know a lot of times we don't know good counselors off the top of our heads, but go to your church if you have one, or if you don't regularly attend church, then go to a church in your area and just talk to the pastor and say, hey, who is somebody that I could talk to? I have an issue and I really need to talk to somebody. Um, you definitely want to go to a Christian counselor. Don't just pick somebody out of the phone book. But, you know, go to your pastor, see who they recommend. Maybe they know somebody, maybe they can get you in touch with a ministry in your area. Or maybe if you tell them what it is that you're dealing with, they might even say, hey, I know this other lady at this church who has been through this exact same thing, and they can connect you with somebody. So if this is something where you're like, I know what is going on with me, I know, like, I can see this is exactly what's happening, and I need to work through this, then go get somebody who can help you and work through it. And don't just settle and don't just deal with it. Okay, second scenario. What if you are somebody who is saying, okay, so I think I might have some issues in this area, but they're not huge issues and I'm not entirely sure what these issues are. Like I can tell there's something going on, um, but I don't really connect the dots and it's not this like huge thing that's destroying my life. Um, if that is you, then what I want you to do is go ahead and get Jill's book. I am linking it in the show notes so you can go there and find it. But this book, you guys, is really awesome. Um, and I am not the kind of person to get on and just like tell you to go buy books just because, but you know, as I've been looking through this, it covers so many topics. Um, and I really think the biggest value for you is just going to be getting in this book and looking through all the chapters, um, and asking yourself some hard questions and going to God in prayer with each of these topics and saying, um, as you're going through the prayer saying, you know, okay, so here's the topic of forgiveness. God, show me who in my life do I need to forgive? God, show me how has this lack of forgiveness um, been affecting my life? Like what is happening in my life now because I haven't done this thing? And as you are praying these prayers, you guys, I can promise you God is absolutely going to speak to you and he's going to point out hard things. Um, and yeah, that might sound a little scary, but you guys, it is so good. Um, speaking as somebody who has been there, done that, who has walked through this journey, um, being able to figure out, okay, here's where the problem happened. You know, here's how it's affecting me now. And then, okay, here's how I can get to the other side of it. It is so amazing to be on the other side and to be walking in freedom. So if you are someone not really sure how this is affecting you, but you have a good feeling, you probably have something going on or you know what's going on, um, but it's not a huge thing, but it is something that's affecting your life. Absolutely. Um, this book is what you need. Go ahead, check it out in the show notes. Also, um, I have another article I mentioned in the podcast as well um, about steps to taking your thoughts captive in Christ is a really good one. I know it has helped a lot of people. I will link that as well, as well as, you know, a couple other books and resources um, that are going to be really helpful for you. So definitely go check those out as well. And last but not least, as always, if you have not subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? I come back all the time to help you and encourage you and to challenge you um, with the issues that Christian women face all the time. So um, definitely go ahead and join the community. If you have not yet, we would absolutely love to have you because here at Equipping Godly Women, we are not all about just listening to a nice podcast and then going on with our lives. I really want to um, bring you the word of God and bring you so much um, encouragement and advice so that you can learn things and you could be like, hey, that was really good. And then go and change your life and be that amazing Christian woman God designed you to be. So um, check out the show notes. Go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will talk to you again real soon. All right. Bye.